Hello, my name is Pamela Suzette. I'm a mother of five adult children and three grandsons. I'm a cashier at Walmart. I'm a, um, a charismatic Christian woman. I, I love having fun. I love taking walks. I love playing board games and card games. I love um, watching um, romance movies and scientific movies. Um, I love sitting by a, a bonfire roasting marshmallows and s'mores. I love learning about history and science. I love to learn many different topics and many different things. I'm a very open-minded Christian, not a narrow-minded Christian. I'm very open about different beliefs and topics. Uh, but I do have my basic Christian beliefs in that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. But I'm very open-minded on ghosts and the possibility of life on other planets. And I hope to meet a guy who likes to have fun, such as taking walks, going camping, sitting by a bonfire, watching a good movie on TV, playing family games, and spending time with the family. And now I'm going to um, read some questions for myself to answer to make this more interesting. So here goes. Describe your best friend. Um, well, in 2014, I lost my best friend, Ruth. Um, she's a part of my testimony in that <clears throat> I was 16 years old and I thought I committed the unpardonable sin. And I have my testimony on that. But Ruth, God used Ruth to speak to me a very prophetic message. I felt that I committed the unpardonable sin. I thought God didn't love me, and she spoke a very timely word into my life. And she was there during my teenage years just to be a big encouragement in my walk with God. And she died on uh, October 29, 2014. And it was really hard to let my friend go. She's 92 years old. She's like a grandmother that I, I wish she would have been my real grandmother. I mean, she was my best friend. Um, I felt a lot of love from her. Um, I felt the presence of God when I was around her. When I go to visit her, um, you could go into her living room and you could feel the presence of God. That's how strong that Ruth walked with God. And I have not found a person like her on this earth. I found some people kind of close to being like her, but not like her. I mean, this woman walked with God and she had... This amazing love that flowed through her. And I would love to be like her. I would love for people to walk into my living room and feel the presence of God like I did when I visited her. And um, I wish I could meet someone like her again. I really miss her. I know she's in heaven. I know I will see her someday. Okay, so I'm going to do another question. Um, say something about angels. Oh, wow. Um, well, it goes back to my testimony again. My grandmother gave me a book called Angels on Assignment. It was about a pastor who had visitations from the angel Gabriel. And I thought my grandma was crazy for believing in that book. But grandma was really praying for me that I would have a hunger for God. And so I picked up that book and I couldn't put it down. And I realized how much I needed God in my life. <coughs> so, um, I've had my own angel encounters. Um, when I was a small child, one night I was really afraid. And I went back to my room to go to bed. And there was a really tall man standing at the foot of my bed in a white robe. And he used my mother's voice. And he told me not to be afraid that he was there to protect me. Of course, I was afraid and ran to my mother's room screaming, and she told me it was an angel. Um, I also had an angel appear to me when I was in Bible college. One night, um, I was woke up by someone sitting at the foot of my bed. It was a beautiful woman in a white robe. She looked like Victoria's Secret, and she told me that Jesus loves me, and that he loved my friend Bernadette, too, and then she just disappeared. Um, I also believe I was saved by drowning by angel. 
I went to my senior trip to Florida and we got on this water ride. And I didn't read the sign that if you're not a strong swimmer, not to get on this ride. And um, so what happened was I fell off the tube and I was in five feet of water, but I'm very short. So I start to drown and I was crying up for someone to help me. And this man in red swim trucks uh, showed up and carried me into the shallow water and told me I would be okay when I went to turn around to thank him he was gone. And I looked everywhere for this man to thank him and couldn't find him. And I believe he was an angel. Okay, so I'm going to ask the next question. If you could have been someone in history, whom would you have been? Wow. Um, I don't know. I think I'd like to be the Virgin Mary. I think it would have been neat to be the mother of Jesus. Um, you know, it would have been neat to carry the Son of God and raise him. So, yeah, I think it'd be cool to be the Virgin Mary. <laughs> so, my next question is, say something about meditation. Um, well, I think meditation, I think it's when you put on music and just kind of get into a very relaxed state and you clear your mind and you meditate on scriptures and on God and you kind of in some places cases clear your mind to where you can hear from the other side you know a lot of times we're so busy with all kinds of noise in our lives like music TV and all that that you got to get yourself into a very quiet state to be able to hear from God and hear from the other side and I, I guess I'm sure other people have other theories on meditation. What kind of a job do you want to have in 20 years? Well, I personally would like to work in ministry full time. Um, I work at Walmart. It's a job that pays my bills. <clears throat> but my passion is to be in ministry full time and to share the word of God with people, to pray for them, to get words of um, knowledge and wisdom for them to be able to counsel people so my heart is to be in ministry it's not really being a cashier at Walmart you know that's just to pay my bills but I would really like to be in ministry and work for God describe your favorite minister oh my goodness and um, that was Pastor Billy Joe Daughtery um, I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma and graduated from Big Street Bible Institute. And um, there was nothing like Pastor Bill, Billy Joe Doggery. Um, <clears throat> he died of cancer, which broke my heart. But he opened up a bunch of um, Big Street Bible Institute Bible colleges around the world. And he was just an amazing man. You'll have to type in uh, Big Street Christian Center, Tulsa, Oklahoma, to learn more about it. Um, <coughs> You can go to, um, you can just type Billy Joe Daughtery in. He was an amazing person. Talk about, okay, I'm going to skip this one. Uh, let's see, talk about one of your bad habits. Oh, one of my bad habits. I guess I use a lot of toilet paper because I go to the bathroom a lot. Uh, so I'll let it go at that. <laughs> Okay, what is your definition of sin? Uh, my definition of sin is um, breaking the Ten Commandments and doing, you know, anything that would cause harm to another person would be a sin. <coughs> it's basically <coughs> disobeying God. Say something about ghosts. Oh my goodness. Here it goes. Okay, and some of my Christian friends may disagree with me I need to take a drink um I believe in ghosts I don't believe it's just heaven and hell I believe there is an in-between um and I believe that you can cross them over um I studied near death testimonies for six years now and uh, the majority of them is heaven or hell 
But there are some of those near-death experiences that are very earthbound, where the person, they didn't go to heaven and they didn't go to hell. They were here on the earth plane as a spirit. And one guy, <coughs> he shared his testimony. He had a near-death experience. And before, well, back up. He, he went to church and accepted Jesus as his Savior. And the minister told him that he was saved and there was nothing that could ever, he could never lose his salvation. And what happened was because the guy believed that, he started living a very sinful life and he died. And he didn't go to hell and he didn't go to heaven. He was here on this earth. He was a ghost on this earth, an earthbound spirit. But to him, he was in hell because he was separated from God. And he said it was the most horrible feeling, that separation from God. He said he tried to think happy things and he wasn't able to. Everything, he, he just couldn't think of anything good. He's in this like this depressed state of mind and he couldn't um, get out of this, that depressed state. And he knew that he was in hell. And that he missed God. And he cried out for God to save him. And then he came back to life. So he pretty much described what it's like to be a ghost. Um, some of those abandoned houses that were haunted. And you know, you hear you hear ghost stories. The spirits are never happy. They're very sad because they're in a type of hell. They're separated from God. And so he was he was a living person explaining what it's like to be a ghost because that's what he was in his near-death experience and i do believe in them um i've had a black shadow person visit me one time was getting out of the bathtub and this black shadow person is standing in my bathroom doorway and i scream and when i scream he disappeared and i saw all these flies and then they disappear and, and then i start feeling like he was watching me dress and undress and to make a long story short, I had a Christian brother anoint me with oil and pray over my room. And then I haven't had that experience since. But in Cincinnati, we had, um, the kids saw a spirit that looked like the Grim Reaper. I didn't see him, but I felt his presence. He was in my room one night and he actually growled at me. And I commanded him to leave in Jesus' name. And he kept growling more louder and meaner at me. And when I hit the tape, about a song on the blood of Jesus, he left. So I do believe in spirits. I do believe they're real. <clears throat> How can one know God's will for his or her life? Um, that's a really tough one. Um, I mean, it takes a lot of prayer and, you know, just really seeking God. And, oh boy, I don't know how to answer that one. Um, you just get this knowing when you know it is God's will. But in the meantime, it can be a hard time trying to figure out what God's will is. If you were lost in the woods and it got dark, what would you do? Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be really scary. Um, I don't know what I'd do. I think I'd just pray. Well, the worst thing would be to keep walking, I think. Um it would be better to stay put because, you know, the more you keep walking, the more lost you're going to get. I, I mean, if you're in the dark, you know, you could fall in a hole, you could trip over a log, you could run into some kind of wild animal. I guess staying put and maybe being able to build a fire would be a good thing. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Do you need church to be religious? No. You do not need to go to church to, well, you don't even need to be religious to know God. Um, I had about a year where I didn't even go to church. I would do church at home. And um, I just would YouTube different ministers. And I would do my own worship and then do a sermon from a minister on YouTube. And I have to say that I learned more about God staying home than I did going to church i just now got back into going to church but and you don't need to actually go to a church building to um, have a salvation you can just worship god in your own home and um 
do sermons. I mean, we live in a beautiful um, time called technology. You can listen to any preacher on YouTube, and that's the beauty of that. You don't even have to go to church. I mean, it, it's great to have a Christian fellowship, but I've went to some drama churches that really, it caused a lot of drama in my life. And if I had, had to choose between drama or peace, I picked the peace of being home and learning a, about the Lord and sitting at Jesus' feet in the privacy of my own home. It doesn't pay to go to church if you're going to some drama church where people want to cause problems. Now, if you're going to a church where people really love you and they fellowship with you and they pray for you, that's one thing. But if you're in a church where they're they're just like little kids fighting, you know, just get out of that church and find a better church. Or until God shows you where to go, just stay home and listen to a good preacher on TV. How would you change the world to make it better if you had enough power? I would take away war. You know, and I guess the best way to make the world a better place is to take Satan out of this world. That's how I change it, just to bring world peace. Okay, now we'll ask another question. How do you tune into God? Um, well, I do it like by getting really quiet. Sometimes I do it by just being quiet. And then, you know, just getting into the Word of God. Worship is another way. Um, so that's how I do it. What is your favorite sport and why do you like it? Okay, I am not a sports person. I don't, I don't get into football, baseball. I know guys like that kind of stuff. And um, I know if. I get a man, he's going to want to watch the football game or baseball game. And I guess that's something I'll have to learn to get interested in because I personally don't like it. I would rather watch a love movie on TV than to watch sports. Actually, I guess I could get into politics more than sports, and I'm not really into politics either. I'm more into spiritual stuff. I like spiritual things. Um, but I guess I would understand um, politics, politics more than um, sports. Okay, we'll ask another question here. Tell about a time when you felt proud of yourself. Well, I actually feel very proud of myself now learning how to make these YouTube videos. I mean, I am just really proud that I finally figured out how to do this. And, um... I felt proud of myself when I got my driver's license. I was 37 when I got my driver's license. <clears throat> so I felt very proud of myself that I accomplished that. Um, I feel proud of myself that I work and manage my own money. Um, when I was married, I was very codependent on my ex-husband. I didn't know how to manage money. I didn't work. I didn't drive. So I'm very proud of my accomplishments in my life. <clears throat> Thank God for three things. Well, I thank God for Jesus, for family, and for life. What is your favorite room in your house and why? Oh boy. <laughs> I guess I'd like, I'm not sure, it's a toss up between my bedroom and living room. Um, to me, my living room is my sanctuary, it's my church. That's where I would worship God and have church when I didn't go to church, but my bedroom can be also another sanctuary. So it's a toss up between my bedroom and my um, living room. Say something about baptism. Okay, I do not believe that you have to be water baptized to be saved. Um, I think that <clears throat> baptism is kind of like a wet wedding ring on your finger. Um, you can take your wedding band off, but you're still married. Or you can wear it to um, prove to the world that you're married. Um, in the book of Acts, Cornelius was baptized by the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues first before he was water baptized. Which tells me that Cornelius received the Holy Spirit and was born again before he was water baptized. And the thief on the cross 
was um he he found salvation through Jesus without water baptism. I think water baptism is kind of like the church wedding. You don't have to have a church wedding to be married, but you have a wedding to show your to celebrate with your loved ones that you're you're getting married. And so baptism is <clears throat> a outward sign of your salvation and love for Jesus. Um I mean, you know, if you love somebody, you wouldn't have a wedding and stuff. You would want to celebrate families and friends that you are getting married. If you love Jesus, you probably want to do the outward thing of being water baptized. But it doesn't save you from your sins. Only the blood of Jesus saves you from your sin. Um, you could take some drunk and dunk him under the water, and that's not going to make him saved. Is a, is a salvation is a heart thing not a physical thing and that's my thoughts on it <clears throat> what does this mean to you the kingdom of god is within you um well i think that god's principles live inside of us when we're born again um we think according to heaven and how heaven operates instead of how this world operates how would you describe yourself to someone who does not know you um, well, I've pretty much done that. I'm a very spiritual person. I love God with all my heart, soul, and mind. I love people. I believe that um, to be a good Christian, you should walk in love. Of course, no one's perfect. I don't claim to be perfect, but I pray for God's love every day so that I have more of his love so I can love people. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoy having fun. I I like to play games. I like to, uh, I have hobbies. I, I enjoy just doing fun things with people. In what way do you act like a child? Um, well, <laughs> I guess I feel like a child doing these videos. You know, it's fun. Um, I have a very, um, I, get, I have childlike faith, you know, in Jesus. I mean, I know. I know when to be an adult and I know when to be a kid. And, of course, I don't do a lot of rough play type stuff. But, you now I know how to laugh. I know how to have fun. Tell what makes a happy family. I believe a happy family is having Christ as the center of your home. Um, you know, you got Jesus has to be the king of your home for happiness to be in your home. And, um, you know, because when you have Jesus, you have love. And that's what makes a home a happy home. When Christ isn't in the home, then there's a lot of bickering and fighting. And there's no way a family could be happy when they're fighting with each other. <clears throat> if you became president of the United States, what two things would you do? Oh, my goodness. Build a wall. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had to say that because of Donald Trump. I would definitely crack down on the illegal immigrants coming into this country. Um, I don't have a problem with people coming from another country and wanting to become American citizen. But one of the things they would have to definitely do is work for citizenship. I mean, there might be a short period of time that they could get some assistance while they achieve that, but they would have a certain amount of time to achieve some goals, and if they didn't, they have to leave. Um, one of the things they have to learn to do is learn English and learn American history. And, um, you know, they there's just certain things they have to do to be able to stay here. And after that probation period is over, if they did achieve those goals, they'd be shipped back to their own country. I wouldn't put up with these illegals coming in here, uh, robbing us of our um funds and stuff you know um the food stamps should be for the american people welfare should be for those who need help getting back on their feet not for people who want to um come in here and get a free ride i don't believe that you know it's like they get and, and they have to pay taxes they would not get no tax-free business and they would not get out of paying taxes i don't care if they're a citizen from their other country if you live here in America, you're going to pay taxes. That's what I would do. They want to get all this free stuff. 
You know, they might have a short period where they get some assistance until they got on their feet and achieved their um, American citizenship. But if they didn't meet certain goals within a certain period, they would be shipped back to their country. That's my personal feelings on that. What do you do when you are alone? Well, I'm doing this. <laughs> um, I spend, I sometimes watch a movie or TV show. I do a lot of YouTubing. I like learning different things. Um, I might work on my fingernails while I watch a movie. I do my own nails. Um, I like to spend time with the Lord. You know, I might talk on the phone with a family member. So that's kind of what I do. What spiritual goal are you reaching for? Um, just to be more loving. Because I think love is the most important thing. We can have all these spiritual gifts. We can have all these talents. But if we don't have love, then we're nothing. What is something you could do? Well, um, I love to make snowflake scarves. And um, they look like little snowflakes or stars joined together. And I love crocheting those scarves. I got the um, stitch from a baby blanket. And um, they really do make beautiful lady scarves, and I enjoy doing that. Talk about a time when you were very irritated. Oh, well, there's times when I, <laughs> there's a lot of times. I can't really think of any right now, but i tell you what makes me really irritated is slow pokes on the road. Especially when you're in a hurry to get to work. It never fails when I'm late, I get behind a darn slow poke. And then I hit every red light. So that's, that does irritate me, the slow pokes. And, oh, yes, customers talking on their cell phones when I'm trying to ring them up. I think that's very rude to me when, you know, I understand sometimes important phone calls come. But I remember one time this lady just kept yakking and yakking and yakking on her cell phone. She never talked to me. And it was like she wasn't getting her groceries off the care. So she just yipping the yak. I mean, it was like she put her motor mouth in full speed and wouldn't shut up. She was speaking in another language, and it was like she, her, she could spit out a thousand words per minute. And um, I thought she was just very rude. You know, I thought you could at least hang that darn phone up and communicate with me. I am bringing up your groceries. So that's another thing that irritates me when people talk on their cell phones at the checkout. What do you think your friends say about you when you're not around? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, it just depends on the people. Um, some people don't like the topics that I talk about. And um, I'm just a very unique person. I'm just different. I'm not the same, you know, I'm not the same as the Joneses. I believe in just being myself, being a free thinker, saying, saying it like it is. And um, so... Some people like me, some people don't. What do you like to do in your spare time? Oh, wow. Well, I like to crochet. Um, I like to take walks. Um, I like to get online and minister to people. Um, watch a movie. <laughs> Let's see. What does America mean to you? Well, I love America. America is my country. Um, I'm not 100% pleased with America. Um, I don't like the violence and the ungodliness in America. When I was a little girl, you just didn't hear of certain things going on in this country. Um, so, you know, I want to see our country come back to God and be a more godly na nation. And there is a lot of things in America history that I'm not proud of. Um, the thing is, you know, people think that America started out with God, but there's some ungodliness, a lot of bloodshed. You know, the Europeans came over and killed all 500 nations of Native American Indians, which I'm not proud of. I'm not proud that they had slavery. So, but other than that, I'm, I'm proud of the Constitution and, and the freedom that we believe in.